Hi, good day, everyone. Larry Berman here, live from Sydney, Australia. That's a terrible uh, straight accent. Apologize to, to all the Australian uh, people watching. Um, so I, I'm not going to be doing my BNN show for a couple of weeks. This is my first real vacation um, in probably since 2012. But while I have traveled a lot um, and I'm always working wherever I am, this is the first time where, for the most part, I'll, I'm sleeping while the North American stock markets are open. Now, given the jet lag and everything else, uh, I, I haven't slept in yet. <laughs> um, so I, I catch the last couple hours of, of the trading day, which I which I did here on Friday. And I want to take a dive, you know, right into the chart rooms. And it shouldn't be with any surprise on what I'm going to talk about this week. And that is the employment report, uh, Jerome Powell, and of course, what happened with uh, NVIDIA. Let's take a dive in. This is my uh, favorite screen to look at um, different stocks, and, and I've sent it before. I uh, showed it here before. The red line on top is the analyst consensus earnings 12 months out. Um, the blue dashed line is a uh, linear regression off of a four-year trend. And we can see how parabolic the market's gotten in recent weeks um, in terms of uh, how far above trends. So we're now five standard deviations above trend. And of course, Friday, you, you had this absolutely massive uh, reversal pattern, the ugliest candlestick pattern you could possibly imagine after a parabolic rise like that. You can go back and look at uh, the post uh, earnings back here and argue that you had an, a very ugly candlestick. It mattered for a week and um, market couldn't make new highs and it consolidated. So at a very minimum, you have to expect now that the stock consolidates at best with a correction. This was one standard deviation of trend, um, call it a hundred bucks um, at a very minimum. And one could argue uh, that this might be the uh, high of the stock for years to come. And so if you actually know the answer to, to that question, you're certainly smarter than I and your crystal ball is, is better than mine. I don't think anybody really knows. But, you know, we, we can recognize the, the put call skews, the optionality, everything that's happening in the name and, and what it ultimately you know, means for the stock. Uh, a couple interesting uh, Twitter uh, posts. So let, let's have a look at that. RJR Capital tweets uh, on Friday that Google's net income is greater than NVIDIA's revenue, uh, yet NVIDIA's market cap is 40% larger. You can always do some data mining on, on things like this, but, but this is a pretty good one in terms of, you know, gut check. Now, you could have done this a week ago and two weeks ago and three weeks ago and probably come up with also some pretty remarkable outlandish valuations, um, no doubt. But uh, given the price action today, backed by these fundamentals, and you, you put that mosaic together and you, you get the sense that, um, you know, obviously a topping price action is, um, is definitely something that you know, we need to um, to think about. My my good friend and analyst Andy Andy Constan uh, tweeted something around you know best contributions and and worst contributions uh, in terms of what the markets done uh, top top contributors. If you go back to obviously Chat GPT days, Nvidia, Microsoft, Meta, uh, Amazon. They, they've been responsible for, you know, virtually all of the gains in the market, um, you know, since that point on a year-to-date basis. Again, you look at the percentage contribution, 
in terms of the total return of the market on a year to date basis. And you can quickly see, you know, the top 10 names or so are responsible for, for all the gains in the, in the market. The, the skew here is, is quite dramatic. When you look at, from my lens and look for value, um, you know, is Pfizer going to be a value trap? It's a name that, you know, I, I like, I like as a dividend payer. I, I, there's obviously challenges in, in large cap pharma in general. But when you look at where I'm looking at to place money right now, if, if the bubble is, is peaking out here, what happened in the dot-com bubble was that the money went back to the value names. And, you know, you, you can see uh, a lot of different names in the portfolio here that have underperformed pretty significantly on a year-to-date basis on where, um, you know, some opportunities may lie. So, you know, that's the that's the lens I take to markets. I, I'm not ever going to be the guy who's pumping the stock of the day. Uh, we'll leave that for other, uh, other analysts. Getting back into the chart room here from the Twitter world. So where, where does that a name like this correct to if, if this is going to come off? And my sense is, is back down to these levels right, right here, um, where we just kind of lifted off from, there was a massive gap on earnings in here. And all will know who's historically have studied gaps that these gaps eventually get filled. So, you know, I, I would look for that in the weeks to months uh, ahead. Um, it's going to really depend a lot on what some of the analysts do with their price targets here. Now that the stock significantly, you know, surpassed the price target, um, if they're going to and what happens on Wall Street is you know, analyst gets a tap on the shoulder and they say, you know, hey, John, by the way, the stock's trading above your target, either move your target higher or update your commentary. And so we'll, we should see a lot of that coming out of Wall Street over the weekend and into you know Monday and Tuesday's trade. And that will, will help define whether this is a bigger top or it's a consolidation on what the analysts say here about, about valuation. Cost of money is always important. The how the market responded this week to Powell. So Powell's a little bit dovish. He kind of indicated that we're almost there, I think was was in, in terms of being convinced it's time to cut rates. So does that mean well March is off the table, but does that mean you know May, June is back on the table? Or the rhetoric really of the last month or two pushing those rate hikes back even further. Um, you know, Powell is, is really proven himself to be a, a more of a dove on the board than, than anything else. He is a very political animal. He, he just, he comes across that way to me. Um, I, I would imagine um, he understands that if um, the economy is not in a good way going into the election, which is very possible, then Donald Trump might be the next president. Um, you know, I'm not sure how comfortable he is with that, but uh, effectively, um, you know, people vote with their pocketbooks. So there is some incentive, certainly by yelling at Treasury, to uh, be as stimulative as, as they possibly can in an era where the fiscal outlook so he was asked about the fiscal and he said you know that's your job not not my job um warren scathed them a little bit on on different things uh, as well this week um he came out of that actually looking okay it was wasn't terrible in fact warren looked a little bit uh uh, bad coming out of that. But when it comes to the cost of money and long bonds, so we've had this little bit of a rally this week back in, in Treasury yields. And I, I expect fully under the weight of the colossal supply coming and the virtual certainty when we get to the next quarterly refunding around, uh, announcement at the end of April, uh, early May, that uh, the market needs to back up a, a whole lot more and that we'll see TLT, um, you know, somewhere, my guess is between 88 and, and 90. 
uh, at that point um, and where I'll start to look to unwind a lot of the hedges we put into the uh, our bond portfolio, you know, in this period where it was just getting really silly uh, in terms of the, the bond market rally and what it was expecting from inflation. The payroll reports were, were mixed, um, obviously CPI and PCE type numbers are really going to drive the Fed's thinking, um, but we're at full employment. Uh, this is the longest period of sub 4% employment that the U.S., I think, I, I haven't vetted this, but I heard the comment on Friday uh, ever. and. Uh, so soft landing is is what the market's priced for, and and just seems like it's 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 unlikely to happen. Obviously, the Fed would would ease a little bit. They would have to ease more aggressively if it was a harder landing scenario. Um, but ultimately, under the weight of of bond supply. So if we get a hard landing, you can imagine what the deficit's going to look like, um, and that would demand even more coupons. So, you know, you you may have a really Incredible steepening uh, happening in the bond market over the next, say, two years. But that's only if inflation uh, comes down significantly under the scenario of a hard landing, uh, not one of a soft landing where wage pressures continue to be a problem uh, for inflation. Anyways, that's all we have this week. Have a great day, mate.